Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome everybody. Right now, this um, obviously this will be part ten. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we've done from uh, number one, Lisa, haven't we? Yeah. Up to number ten, yeah. and I can do ten. It's not nine and a half. Right. So <laughs> that one just doesn't bend. Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, here we are, guys. Number ten. Okay, we've done. We've done the bit of beading on the on the pot on the last one, so we've done that. Um, that was a bit more advanced stuff. I wasn't going to do that yet, but I was asked a question. Right, what I was going to do now, moving on from this, because we've turned all these little bits. We've done the little vases, the little goblet. We've done um, the little plates, little bowl, little pot. We've done the lidded bowl. We've done shallow bowl. We've done all that. We've turned on pine, so we've done that. So now I'll go into a little bit about what tools you would add with as i said you can do anything with a type 3 set okay um but there's a few tools that would be beneficial to have with them uh and the first one i'm going to talk about is a parting tool because i get asked all the time <laughs> about parting tool and about my parting tool okay so right parting tool now if you basically if you if you just turn pens and things like that i mean i've turned thousands of pens i've never ever used a parting tool um, bowls, you don't need a pint tool if you're just going to turn bowls. You wouldn't need one. And before people argue that, yeah, you can use, but you don't have to have one. You can turn bowls, no problem. But if you're going to do spindle work and stuff like that, then yes, really, you, you want a parting tool. And there's so many. I mean, I've, I, perfectly honest with you guys, I've never bought a parting tool. Specifically bought a parting tool. Okay, because I think it's one of those tools that is so easy to make and so easy to keep sharp. Um, so I, you know, I wouldn't waste my money buying a particular buying tool. I've got a couple that come. They come. I've got this one, and I've got this little one. These come with chisels I purchased. Okay, I didn't specifically buy. This was with some little little set I bought. You had a spindle gouge, parting tool, and a little skew. They're up. They're up there. Okay, and it had the parting tool with it. This one came. I bought another set. I've got them just here. I've got a spindle gouge, a skew chisel. And they come with a little parting tool. I wouldn't buy a parting tool. My other ones I've made. Um, I've made them out of various. I mean, this one is quite a chunky one. This is uh, a bit of six mil tool steel. I just bought a bit of tool steel off of eBay. Okay, don't have to be nothing special. And I ground this one like that. So it gives me a six mil and it's quite a nice part. It's a handy tool, that one. Um, this is just a piece of four mil steel, okay. Four mil by, I think that is, hang on, I won't think, it's 15 mil, okay. So 15 mil wide, and that makes a perfect, absolute perfect parting tool, okay. Um, and these work fine. I'm going to show you, I'm just going to do a little cut here. Got my glasses on, I'm not really doing any turning. Lisa might want to come up and show the parting tool. Let me just bring it around a bit. I'll bring it around. I'll just go it. through quickly with how these. Yeah. And, and basically, with, with the pine tools, they all work the same. Nicely, if you can come in on where the bevel is and just raise the handle and come in and part. Okay. Um, this one, like I said, I made up specifically for doing larger bits when I want to do like a. A little tenon or something like that i can come in with it and these are just made out of tool steel by you know it's so cheap to buy the shop ones there's no difference in it so why go and buy one you know you might as well make one we've got the little one here now all these i'll do the same um if you come straight into scrape you can what you'll find, if you come straight into scrape, you'll actually get a, a cleaner, quite often cleaner start on it, okay? But the better way, if you can, is to come in on the bevel, raise the handle, and just lift it and go straight in. Get a nice cut. The trouble with all these, I'll quickly show you, this is a fin parting tool, okay? Which I made out of a piece of fin tool steel. It's one eighth tool steel, okay, by, this is 25 mil, okay? And it just made a thin parting tool. Sometimes you, you just want that thin parting tool. You don't want to lose too much wood. 
when you're doing boxes for parting for the lid, you don't want to take too much because of the, the grain. You want to keep the grain matched up, okay? Now, as I said, these is just a, all you get by a piece of tool steel, guys. Just cut it and then just sharpen it up. I tend to sharpen uh, parting tools on my sander, okay? Not on the wheel. The wheel will give quite a hollow grind. I don't like it on a parting tool. Um, I would tend to just do them on the sander, just put them on like that, and that's it, it's done. If you ain't got that, you can use a diamond file, you can use what, whatever you want to use, just, you'll have to find a way. And they all give a fairly clean cut, look, they're all pretty clean on the cuts there, okay? And as I said, they're just tall steel, that's just a piece of tall steel. You tend to buy it, if you get a piece, you can buy like 800, um, 8 inch piece, 200 mil. I always would buy them, um, at the sort of 400 to 500 mil long, you get two tools out of one piece, cut it in half and you can make two tools. Um, I've made skews out of it and everything. Now what I will say is if you're gonna do it with a tool steel when you buy it, if you sharpen it up, you will literally get a few cuts, three or four cuts and it will lose its edge, okay? Now, uh, I'm, I, I'm not a forger, I'm not a blacksmith, I don't do any of that, okay, I don't have a forge, I don't have a furnace or anything, I basically, with these, all I've ever used is a blowtorch, okay, what people say about temperatures and stuff, that's absolutely fine, if you want to do it all totally that way, for me, this has worked, it's never fouled me, okay, I've done it with the skews I've made and everything, I'll just clamp that still, and once I've cut it to where I want it, and then I just heat it up until it's basically cherry red, okay? It's bright red, and then just, uh, I normally have a little tin with engine oil in it. Just take it and just drop it straight in the engine oil. It will smoke to hell. Sometimes it will ignite, okay? But just do it outside. Just drop it in there, let it cool, take it out, and I do that two or three times, okay? I don't bother with, um, then putting it in an oven to heat it and things like that. I don't bother with it. It holds an edge absolutely fantastic. And that's all I've ever found I've needed to do. And I've done that with all these tall steel ones, okay? And I've, as I said, I've even done that with my big skew here, this one. It was exactly the same. I've done it exactly the same. It holds an edge absolutely lovely, okay? Right, the next thing with pine tools, because I know people say about the cost of them you know it adds money to your to purchasing right now one of my absolute favorite and best all-time parting tools is this it's a old marples set square okay adjustable bevel right so you know just for doing your your lines your 45s and all that it's one of those okay just pick them up you can pick them up at the boot fair stuff like after time the people selling them don't even know what they are you know I mean, this one I paid literally, I think probably a pound one fifty for it. That was it. But it is a fantastic steel. Don't get the cheap new plastic handle ones that you get from the you know pound shop and all that faithful ones. They're absolute crap. Buy a proper one with the black steel like this. Okay, one of these. This, as I say, this is a Marples. Got the nice brass bits. It's all nice and pretty. You lock it down. It's perfect. Sharpen that up. It is. Fantastic, it's it's basically, I think that's a, a knife, this is a sixteenth this, sixteenth of an inch, and it's, it's fantastic, it's got so much strength, it's lovely, and look, come in, look at that for a fine, thin parting tool, <laughs> you know, you come in and you can get a lovely, lovely line, right, like that, okay, now, the next thing from that is, this one I made, and I did talk about this before, which is just an old carving knife, okay? Now you can pick these up in the charity shops, 20p, something like that, at boot fairs. They're so cheap. This was an actual bread knife, serrated it had. It was sort of about that long. Cut it down, just ground that away, okay? The, the sharp bit, so it's not sharp or anything like that. But you don't, don't go and get one of these cheap plastic handle ones that you get, okay? They're no good. This has, the steel runs all the way in the handle and it's got three rivets, okay? And that sharpens up nice and again, it just makes, 
for 20p guys it makes a fantastic parting tool and really that's all you ever need is that okay but as you've a lot of people ask about them my parting tools i use my carbide ones okay they're not carbide parting tools what they are is they've got a carbide a tungsten carbide tip tct tip they're saw blades that's what i make them from basically i got fed up fed up with with sharpening these scrape um parting tools because the thing with a parting tool it is a scraper it's just used i'm just going to put these away ocd gets in the way of things mm -hmm. you know <laughs> um it, it, it is just a scraper at the end of the day. That's all you're using it for is to scrape. So the edge goes quick, okay, when you do a lot of pine. And I got fed up having to keep sharpening it, you know. Um, so I made up about, it's, it's got to be but close to seven, seven years, maybe getting on to eight years now, I don't know. I made up, this was my first ever one I made up, okay, out of a saw blade, circular saw blade. It was on my DeWalt. Okay, um, chop saw and or mitre saw, if whatever you want to call it, I call it chop saw, mitre saw. And it had been on there for a long time, I can tell you, it, it was it had done a lot of work. And I changed the blade and I wanted to, and I thought, well, I wonder what it would work like. Now, I cut the blade that I put it in here and it worked fantastic. And this is like eight years, and this has done so much work and it still hasn't been sharpened. Okay. Um, and that's why I use them. They, it just, it lasts for so long. I mean, if you think on a chop saw, they, they turn it four and a half thousand RPM and they cut loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of wood. Unless you do something silly with them, they last for a long time. Um, you know, uh, you can get nail cutting ones. So if you want a really good one, get a nail cutting blade and take a piece out of that. So, this is what I've come up with and I made these. And this, now the, the difference with this is, it's not, it's all right if you're on centre like there and you can push in. Because the bar's quite wide on them, majority of time I tend to be, look, I'm quite a bit above centre there with it, okay? You can see where centre, centre's down there. All you do when you use it, is when you start to cut, point towards centre. Just raise the handle and it will come in like so now the reason why i'm gonna take that off in a second there actually i'll probably do it now because i've got it in a chuck because the other reason behind these so let me just come in there right we'll take that off okay right now one the staying sharp that is still as sharp as the day i i put it in there and i mean i've got loads of these i was very very fortunate for a while i i found a, a thicker blade this was a big 18 inch blade you don't find them very often to buy them new a hell of a lot of money you're talking sort of like 200 pound to over 200 pound for a blade um of this quality i was very lucky to get hold of one a bit cheaper that was a brand new blade and i cut it up i never i've not got a saw for that to go i cut it up and i made loads and loads of parting tools out of it um yeah they, they don't come up very often those so that's that sort of thing sorry that's got that one. right <laughs> now the other reason behind these because the kerf of the, the the actual tip is wider than the shaft you don't have to worry about relief cuts okay so when you're doing things with one of these ones and we're coming in here Okay, when we're coming right in, when we get to about there, it now starts to bind, okay? It's there, it's binding, okay? And what you'll find is it will start, that gets hot, it will start to burn, okay? So what you normally have to do is come in and take another cut like that. It gives you a relief, so now it's loose. And then we can go... I'm going to just change and do my left hand. I don't like stretching over the lathe, over the chuck. I just want to pop that off. It's going to take a little bit because it's... <laughs> get, there we go. It's, this is that pine and it, it gums up on there. Mm -hmm. Right, so you have to take a relief cut. 
and that's another downside of it. But with these, because the tip is wider than the kerf, it never binds up. So that means we can come in and just take our cuts in one go. Like so. And I have parted off right up on this. I've parted like 10 inch bowls. I've parted like a 10 inch bowl blank and parted it in half. Okay, this is gonna be a horrible fish because it's just pine and I'm just pushing it straight through. So that's why I came up with these, okay? Now I don't sell these, they're not on my website. I don't sell them as a tool because it's not a pretty pretty, okay? It's a saw blade. I've had to cut it with an angle grinder, okay? And then I've had to sand it all to shape. Now, the one thing is where, with saw blades, when you get them, if you get decent ones, you'll tend to find each tooth alternates. One goes to slopes to the right, one slopes to the left, but, and that's how they work, like a saw blade, okay? A hand saw. So, all I, have to, all I do is, uh, you can do it on a CBM wheel, or diamond file. Be careful not to mess your wheel up. You just have to put it on to get it to be straight. Otherwise, it, uh, it'll always be going one-sided with you, because it'll be a point. So that is the, the only thing with them. But there is an advantage to that, because I made my um, tenon tool and recess tool by welding two of them together and matching the two two teeth. So I kept the slope. So that for me then makes my tenon tool, which I just come straight in, push straight in, gives me a perfect dovetail, okay? But as I said, they're not pretty tools. They're not pretty that, look, it's, it's, uh, it's welded up. It's been welded to a piece of steel there. It's not got to be pretty. All it's got to do is it's got to work. And that works fantastic. And the same as these, they work fantastic, okay? Um, I have sold, I've said to people, yeah, if they want one, you let me know. At the moment, I haven't got any, and I've got no saw blades, and I'm flat out with other stuff. I haven't got time to get blades and cut them up. So at the moment, I don't have them available. But if, you know, my thing is make them yourself, guys. They're so easy to make. If you don't want to make it yourself, then I'm happy to make one for you. Obviously, you know, you have to pay because I'm, I'm, I've got to buy the blade and I've got to make it. It's my time, um, and I will make them, but I don't put them on the website because I don't think they're a tool I, I really put on there. They're not, a, they're not a pretty, pretty tool. So if you're into your pretty, pretties, you know, if you want like, you know, you can go and buy the carbide parting tools. If you want to throw 120 quid at one, then that's up to you. For me, parting off, no thank you. So that's just a little bit about the parting tools. But do you need one? I'm, I'm gonna say yes. Yes, because there is so much you can do when you've got a parting tool. So yes, I would say you can. You don't have to. You can get away without one. But really, I'd get a parting tool and I'd make one. If you want, just get a carving knife, do it. It's perfectly safe. It's, it's, there's no problems with it. Costs you like 20p, sharpen it up. And it's you don't have to heat treat it. You don't have to do anything with the, these because it's actually a knife. It is... A steel that's designed to hold an edge and all you've done is cut it put a point on it like that and that is it short parting tool and as you see guys it i mean this this will just straight in again you will need a release cut if you want to go a bit deeper but what well, fantastic little little parting tool it is absolutely fair. it's 20p knife and it works. You know, make one. What you got to lose? 20p. Make <laughs> one, try it. You'll probably think, right, I'll throw that, that Storby one over there and get rid of that, <laughs> and I'll be using that one. <laughs> give it a try, guys. Give it a try. And not, not just because that is not even a Storby, so don't start on that. Yeah. I'm not saying nothing about Storby. We're not ones. against any brands. No, I'm not against I'm just <laughs> the only name I can think of at the time when I said it. <laughs> right, so there you go, guys. That is that. Okay. But to me, the best parting tool ever, because it never, ever needs sharpening. I've got loads of them. I've got, I think I've got nine of them, <laughs> parting tools. Okay, saw blades. And that's it. So, yeah. And that's it, guys, parting tool. Next time we go on to what other tools to add, I think, like um, I said before, the box hollower, 
the SCH3, and then we'll go on to other tools after that to do other projects, and we'll turn something on the next one, okay? So that's it for now, guys. Toodle pip. <laughs> Bye, guys.